Hey gang, it's Paul with Stud Pack. Welcome back to the channel. And welcome back to the Stud Pack Dream House build. A few videos back, you saw me and the boys install all the windows and the slider upstairs on the garage. At the end of that video, we sprayed them with a garden hose to give them a good old test. Didn't find any leaks, so we said, Mother Nature, bring it on. But it didn't take one drop of rain to rain on our parade. So 20 minutes after we wrapped up the video, Jordan went inside to edit and I came upstairs to clean up and I found this on the windowsill. So I called Jordan upstairs and we stood there together completely in shock because we knew our installation method was bulletproof. So what was it? Was it the windows? Was it our installation method? Or was it our testing method? Well, today we're gonna find out. But before we find out how the water is getting into the windows, we wanna give a big shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Factor. Now, when we started building this house, we knew it was gonna be a big project, but we had no idea how busy we were gonna be all day. Get up early in the morning, you're picking up materials, you're working all day at the job site, then you go home, you're online, you're responding to emails, you're invoicing, and when you're that busy, one of the first things to go out the window is a good meal. And that's where Factor comes into play. Their fresh, never frozen meals are ready in two minutes. Just heat, eat, and you're back at work. And these meals taste great. They're designed by chefs and dietitians. So what that means, they're delicious and they're nutritious. All right, guys, we're in Jordan's little kitchen, the temporary kitchen, and he does have a stove, but he doesn't have propane. So the only thing he can cook on is the microwave. So these factor meals work great for him because that's all he has. And if you're at a job site, that's all you're gonna have too. So these work great in those situations. Heat it up, enjoy your meal, and get back to work. Now, this is absolutely my favorite, the beef poblano bowl. Yeah, how does that taste? A little mm. taste test? That is awesome. So we love having this stuff in the fridge and we know you will too. So click the link below and use the code STUDPACK50 at checkout to get 50% off of your first Factor box. So don't forget on your first order, using the link below, STUDPACK50 at checkout, you're gonna get 50% off your first order. And a huge thanks to Factor for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back on those windows. Now I wanna say right off the bat that only one of our windows was leaking. And I can't even really say the window was leaking because we don't have definitive evidence evidence that it was. What we can say for certain is that these three windows across the front of the building were installed improperly by us. Here's why. Now, obviously this building that we're building right now is new construction and the windows that go in here are new construction windows as opposed to replacement windows that you'd put in a house that was already built. Those windows are called replacement windows. So what's the main difference between new construction windows and replacement windows? Well, it's the nail fin or the nail flange. You saw us use the nail flange on all the other windows upstairs. It works great. It works great for the installation. You just nail it on. And it also works great for the water proofing. It's not to say that replacement windows aren't weatherproof. It just makes it easier to manage the water behind the siding and the casing when you have a nail fin. Now, when Jordan was ready to order the windows, we grabbed the plans, went to the showroom, and placed our order. Jordan had to pick out the style of window, the grids, how they operate, et cetera, et cetera. Once he did that, we placed our order, and it was kind of a blind order. In other words, we simply let the salesman handle it. We knew these three front windows were gonna be mulled together. In other words, four individual windows all connected together as one unit at the factory. What we didn't know was that the factory couldn't install a nail fin on a mold window at the factory. They send them with the windows and it's up to us to put them on at the job site. And of course we know that now, but when these windows showed up to the job site without a nail fin and I saw the holes here, I figured that's the way we attach the windows to the building using these holes drilled by the factory and not the nail fin. And in that video, I even mentioned the track in the windows where a nail fin could go and that on previous projects, I applied my own nail fins to windows. So we were almost there. So close. So close, just not 100%. Now we're gonna take 100% responsibility for installing these three windows the wrong way. I spent a lot of time online looking at information, trying to figure something out, just like you do when you're faced with a new project. And I could not find a detail that explained how to put the nail fin on a replacement window. It's easy, I just didn't find that detail and I didn't have the nail fins anyway. Now we have had several conversations with Pella. They have been awesome. One of those conversations was about their instructions and they said they're working to improve it. So that's awesome. We love hearing that. So what does that mean for us? Well, it means we have to reinstall these three windows with the fins. Now I read a lot of comments on our channel and other channels about how we do things over and over. We don't get them right the first time. Well, that's okay with me 
because I always redo stuff. If it's not perfect, I'm gonna go back and make it perfect or as close to perfect as I can get it. So in the end, by the time we're done with this garage and that house that's gonna be behind me, that thing's gonna be dialed in absolutely perfect. It's gonna be one of the sickest houses on YouTube. I'm, I cannot I'm wait super confident to see it. in that. Yeah, absolutely. I just wanna take this opportunity to say that the framing is cool and a lot of the times the framing is the most exciting part of this build, but one of our goals with this build is that the framing is not the most exciting part. Right. All the exciting stuff is coming when the drywall goes it's up. It's coming real fast. Yeah. <laughs> but that's enough about that. Let's get back on this water. To try and find the water leak, we hopped back up on our scaffold and inspected our zip tape Lexel seal on all four sides of our window. We got in here with our fingernail and we checked it and it was bulletproof. I mean, it was tight and it looked great. We felt like there was no way water could get in right here. And to take it a step further, these two windows were bone dry inside. So we hopped back in the building and we figured if we can't find the leak from the outside, maybe we can find it from the inside. So we put some tape along the bottom, sealed it up and pressurized it with some air and some soapy water on the outside. You can find any air leak with soapy water, right? We've all done that with a tire or a raft. So I'm just kind of spraying around the gasket, spraying around the mole, getting in that corner. Go ahead, dad. Boom. Yeah, right up in there, man. So. Well, our test wasn't conclusive. We were getting a few bubbles at each bottom corner, but in our discussions with Pella, it turns out we put way too much air pressure on the window. It wasn't designed for that at all. So we couldn't chalk up the water leak in the building to the little bit of air that was escaping through the corner. But our investigation isn't done yet. There's a key feature on these windows we want to point out to you. It's these weep holes right here. Take a look at the difference between this one that's Jordan showing you right now and these three over on the right. These don't have that little flap or that door. And that's a key part of the design of the water management for this window. So when water's coming down the window, it hits that and it can't go inside. That flap is designed only to let water out, not to let water in. So because these had the missing little flaps, we were wondering, is it possible that the water got in there causing our leak? Well, we designed a test for that. Let's show you what it looked like. All right, guys, here's our official test rig for the window. Now, every test we did on this window so far, Pella didn't like, so they probably aren't gonna like this one, but it's the only way we can know for certain if the window is holding the water or draining the water. So come on around to this side. This is the inside of the window, and it comes with this decorative cover right here for the bottom of the window. And they're actually available for all four sides, which we might get anyway, because Jordan really likes the way that looks. But if you look underneath, there's a little slot. Now this fiberglass frame, it's all one piece. And the idea is any water that gets past the window is gonna go into here, drain through this slot and out the weeps on the other side. So let's go to the other side and look what we did. We removed the little weeps so it was easier to tape and we blocked them with four pieces of zip tape. And we're actually gonna fill that trough with water and see if it holds water like a pool. If it holds water like a pool, the window's performing as designed. But if we get a leak at the corners, maybe not so much. So I got some water behind Jordan. We're gonna pour it in the trough, see if it holds. And if it does, we'll simply pull the zip tape and let it drain and go on to our next step. Now that track is all one piece, but since the leak was on this side of the window, that's where we're gonna put our water. And you can see I'm gonna fill this up and it's gonna start draining out of these two slots. And there it goes. I'm just gonna go slow so I don't overfill it. And then it's slowly draining into the bottom part of the frame. So now it came up on this side, which proves that the frame is all one piece on the bottom. So I'm gonna stop. And now we know that that thing is full of water. And we can inspect it. And now we can inspect it. So are we getting any water coming out from where the air was coming out in these corners? No, it's, we're not. It's dry. It's, it's bone dry. Yeah, the whole bottom. Yep, it's perfect. Just like it was designed to be. So as the final bit of water is draining out of the window, that ends this test. And it was good and it's bad, right? It's good because the window is performing as it was designed, but it's kind of bad for us because we still don't know how the water is getting on to our windowsill. All right, guys, in our opinion, that test was pretty conclusive, filling the frame with water and seeing if we had a leak. We did not. And just so you know, and before you comment, we actually did test the upper mole also, no leaks. So where's our leak coming from? We don't have a definitive answer, but we got a house to build. We got to do something. So we're going to put the nail fins on and install the window with the fins. And the nail fins are going to manage the water away from the building, away from the window, 
do the job they're supposed to do so we can continue with our job of building this house. Let's get going. All right, guys, we got this window installed. We did it off camera. Well, not really. We started to video it, but it got really sketchy. I got it. All right. I got it. I do not like this. See, I feel like we should have put the Lexel on first, and then now and you could have screwed that off. Yep. That's what I was thinking. I was going to say that, but I decided not to. Yep. So we turned off the cameras, focused on the insulation, and then we're gonna show you how we do it on these two. But I'm so glad to see that window in. It was a pretty big downer, honestly, coming upstairs, making the corner, and seeing a big hole in our window True. where something used to be, and now we gotta fix it. But now it's fixed, and we're gonna do the next two behind Jordan. We're gonna show you step-by-step step how we do them. I'm gonna be on the inside, Rad and Jordan are gonna be on the outside. Let's get it done. Why do we have to do the other two? Why can't we just leave oh, them? Oh, that's a good point. If they're dry, why, why even mess with it? They do not leak, but, as you can see from the big stretch, this was where the window was originally, but now it's further out that way because we put the nail fin on it. We can't leave those two. Well, we could, but they need to be out the same as this. So the casing looks the same and all the reveals are the same. Right. In my opinion, what do you think? Well, it's your house. Nobody would ever know, except for us. Nobody would so ever if know. If you guys can keep a secret, then we got to do them. Yeah, yeah all right. All right, it, it's unanimous. We're going to do them. You ever see anybody use a Lexel tube to remove Lexel, Jordan? Never. <laughs> all right, we're all loose around the window. Time to push it into the building. Break it off. Are we picking it up? We're dropping it back. Pick it up. Man. <laughs> and now all this junk that's left on the window, we gotta clean it off. All right guys, we got all the Lexel, all the zip tape off of there. We are done with that project. We're so glad there's only one left. It is tough to get on. It is tough to get off. So our next step is to slide on our nail fin. So we're gonna simply cut them to length. We're actually gonna put the bottom one on here, tip it out, and fit the others, and slide them on when they're outside, when the window's outside. We're gonna thin the window when it's outside. You ready, guys? Let's do it. Let's get this one done, I'm ready. There we go. There's the profile of the fin. You can see there's a little brush, weather stripping seal here. Really like that detail. And I'm gonna slide it to you, Jordan. I'm gonna slide it in. All right, guys, we're getting this window prepped to put in. One thing we learned on the previous window was that there is this crazy black mastic or glue or sealant, whatever you want to call it, right here where the windows are mulled together. And it's preventing us from sliding this nail fin in. So I wanted to make sure I cleaned it out now while this is on the ground, instead of when it's hanging out there on the scaffold and Jordan's whole house and future is hanging in the balance. But I think I got it. It's a little tight, but I think y'all can make that work. There we go. All right, cool. We got the bottom one in. And one other thing we had to do, we damaged the zip tape a little bit, right? Cutting the, the old one out. So we put a new piece here on the bottom. We got our shims in place. They've already got it Lexeled. We tried Lexeling the one on the right while it was tipped up way too hard. So we got a nice beat around there. You guys ready? Yeah, we're ready. All right, you stay out here, Jordan. Me and Raz are gonna tip you the window. I'll hold it, he'll come around. Get this guy in. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Yep, I like it. Good. Come back then. I'll get it. Yeah, you go around. All right, got it. I actually, I actually like that. Nice. Yep. The little detail we did with these flanges, gang, you probably saw, but we got a little overlap here. So there's one there, just a little overlap detail. So we like that shingle style. So 
our zip tape, our Lexel, our overlap. Hopefully with this method, we won't ever see water. Time to push it back. You ready to push it back? We're gonna go back into our Lexel. Boom. Nice. And that's it, screw it down. That's literally it. Love it. So you see how the Lexel's coming out of like all these little bands, all these little holes? That makes me think that we've got a super good Lexel bond back there. So I don't feel like I have to put a billion screws in it. What I'm trying to do is use the screws to suck the flange tight to the building. So that way it pushes down and compresses the Lexel so we get a good bond. So that's really what I'm looking for. Like right here, I don't see any Lexel squeeze out. So I'm gonna put a screw in there. And there's your Lexel. All right, gang, time to start taping. That's what our screw situation is looking like. Pretty good, just like we did in our last video with Risinger. And Rad's taping on the left side, but on the right side, that's what this detail looks like finished where similar to our previous install, we take the zip, we bring it out onto the window. That's actually per Pella's recommendation. So the zip is connected to the window there, goes here, zip, and then the nail flange, the Lexel with the screws. So we're looking pretty good there. And on the bottom, of course, no Lexel, no zip tape. And these screws aren't even ran in super tight. They're just there holding the flange to the building. But the reason we do that is so that water has a chance to escape if it ever gets inside. Just kind of like how we did over there where the water was on the sill. Now it has a chance to escape, whereas previously we covered it. So just a nicer detail. This feels like a proper installation this time. So we're going to get this sucker installed. Hit that one. Give it a test. What's dad in there doing? Oh, let's go see what, let's go see what he's doing. Uh, what's going on in here? Yo, so remember the weight of our window is really heavy. It's sitting on our shim. It's taking all the weight. The screws Jordan put in and the fin are holding it against the building. But I'm putting these three inch screws through the factory supplied holes in the left and the right hand frames just to attach it to the building just a little better. This is a lot of, it's a lot of window right there, right? Yep. And I just feel better knowing I have a, a structural screw in the sure. sides rather than relying on that little fin. Sure. Now I'm not using any shims. I'm just watching right here, going slow. Done. Nice. So as soon as that starts to move, I stop. Yeah. A shim wouldn't help to me, in my opinion, because we have the nail fin out there to keep it from moving this way a little. Yeah, we never want to have to worry about these windows again. So no. what's a couple screws, right? Yeah, and not having the shims is going to make it a lot easier to air seal this. Mm -hmm. So we'll leave it like this for a few days, make sure it doesn't leak, and then we're going to put a, uh, our backer rod and our big stretch on all four sides. Right. And that will essentially create a back dam down here, just like we did on the other windows. What's a back dam? What's a back dam? So any water that gets on this sill can't come into the building. It's going to go out because that's the reason we didn't tape or seal the bottom of the fit. Right. All right, guys, I'm back out here on the scaffold with Jordan and Red, and we are going to water test this. Now, we know the garden hose isn't the recommended test, but it's all we've got. And uh, I got it set on shower. That's pretty good, huh, Jordan? Yeah. We'll just give it a, a soaking up here. Let the water run down. Do that one, too. Go inside, check it out. And if you're ever wondering what Lexel does with water and how it repels it, check right here. That's where George wiped his finger off. That's pretty funny. Like water on a duck's back. Yeah, right, but buddy, the, the, the middle window was dry. Yeah. So we're not worried about yeah. the middle window. We're worried about that guy. Let's do this one. Let's yeah. switch and I'll do this one. I've seen rain coming down yeah, at that angle. I don't think rain does circles like that though. Yeah, it does in a hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> this little groove around the perimeter of the window, all the windows is called an accessory groove. And we found that it acts like a little gutter and helps channel the water away. So that's working well for us. Let me give it a little bit more, bud. I mean, I feel like that's bulletproof. I know I said that the last time, but this is really good. This is really good. It feels proper. Yeah, yeah. it does. Try not to shoot it in those deep holes. Yeah, and another detail that we're gaining by this installation method is we're, now we're able to utilize this track. Whereas right. before we were covering it, right. but now the zip tape hits that track and the water hits that track and now it just escapes all the way down there. It has no way to get inside. So, all right, let's go inside and see what's going on. Why don't you head down? I'll give them one more soak cool. and I'll meet you upstairs. All right, gang, moment of truth. Let's check these two windows out, see if we have any leaks. We gave them a pretty good soaking. We're good, man. Nail pins for the win. Let's check nice. the one behind you, Jordan. Yeah, I love it. 
I think we got it, guys. I think so. All right, we do have one more to do, but I think we're gonna switch gears for a little bit before we finish that last window. Let's head downstairs, we'll show you what we're gonna do. All right, guys, in the last video, you saw us get that Mini X, we rented it locally, we put in all our conduit, we cleaned out from around our foundation, and we got all those nasty wooden stakes out of the ground, so no more termite food. And the site is looking great. But before we finish the windows, we wanna talk about this section right here between the zip and the slab. We're gonna seal that with liquid flash. It's really the last step of our zip system. It's gonna keep bugs, air, and water out of our building. You can see we sealed it pretty good with this foam and the Lexhelp. We're gonna cut that off, but we're not sure that the liquid flash is gonna to stick to this mud. So we need to get all this clean so the liquid flash sticks really well. Let's grab our shovels and work our way around the building. All right, the foundation's all clean. It looks great. We're gonna wait for it to dry. And while we wait, let's remove this last window. Check it out, gang. The windows are officially all done. We even got the scaffold down and they look great. And it is so good to know that they are sealed, they don't leak, and that we have that nice nail fin all the way around. Love seeing the nail fin on the bottom, the same detail as on the other windows. And all the windows stick out from the siding the same amount, so that's gonna be good. It's gonna match on the whole property. So we promise you, no more window videos. And in the spirit of completion, Look how good the foundation looks since it's all dried after we pressure washed it. So I say it's time to go from in the air on the scaffolding to down on the ground on these drop cloths and liquid flash the zip to the slab. All right, we just have a few areas where our sill seal came out when we tipped up the walls. So I'm gonna cut it and look where our Lexel squoze out. That's just what we wanted. Got a little bit of the sill sealer sticking out too. I'm just gonna make a cut and hopefully I can pull most of that off. Let's see how well this works. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to come up from the bottom, cut through that leg cell. There we go. We already have a good bond here, but the other thing that that liquid flash is gonna do is gonna, it's gonna protect and coat this bottom edge of the OSB because right. it's pretty absorbent, right? So I'm gonna get this foam out of here and show you what's next. Where's that he, bug? He knows, he, it? He, he knows it right there. Oh. See, he was trying to get in and he failed. And he knows that this is his last chance to get in the building. <laughs> Except through the garage door, of course. But once we get those garage doors in, it's gonna be bug tight. I might Look, need he, he's looking at you like, 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 like what are you doing, dude, man? Come on, dude. What's your problem? <laughs> trying to get home. Oh, here's another one. Look, silverfish. All right, that's about as clean as I want it. Now we got about five, five and a half inches of concrete here. And I want a nice clean line on the bottom of my, of my zip flash. You don't have to do it that way, but I'm gonna tape it. I've got some three inch duct tape, some old rolls so I can get rid of them. So I can put it right there, bring our liquid flash down to here, pull that off and we'll have a nice clean edge on the front of the building and all the way around. Good use of duct tape. Is that good? You like that? Or you want me to go a little higher? This is for you, dude. That's right. You me, me and Rad voted against this. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I pulled senior privilege, That's and I right. say let's do it. That's right. All right, guys. I'm going to work my way around the building. Y'all going to be right behind me? Cool. Right, right behind you. All right. Do we need to get a little uh, bl one of the squeegee blades and notch it? Will that fit in there, Rad, or you want to cut them in half? Yeah, we can make it work. All right. All right, gang, first side is completed. Already learned a lot just off this one little section. First thing that we learned, this stuff goes really fast. And we've got a huge garage to do, so we have to be pretty cautious with our usage of this stuff because we don't want to run out. So as you can see, just from turning the corner, 
we're using a lot less product on the right side and let's head over here and show you how we're applying it all right gang so the one thing that we're focused on is just getting this corner right the purpose of this stuff is an air and bug seal so we don't need to wrap all the way up to our zip because the zip is already doing that so we just need to get in that little corner so rad's focused on just getting it right up in that corner and then i'm about to show you my technique that i've developed all right and here's the strat i'm just getting it all the way up into that corner and then up and over like that that was a good one it's a lot easier to do when you've got more product but we're like i said we're just trying to be really careful okay that it's looks like, really good to me it's like when we were lex selling your house yeah, yeah and that's the that's the strat right there and then we have to do this around the entire place you know this is gonna be this is gonna be a lot of fun on the main house dude oh, yeah <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of fun all right gang so that's kind of what the end product is looking like right there just bridging that gap just ever so slightly but i mean once that stuff hardens nothing's ever getting through it and it's covering the end of the osb as you can see so i'm liking that I'm liking that a lot. All right, guys, and with the application of the liquid flash around the perimeter of the foundation, the Stud Pack Dream Garage is officially sealed against any bugs, any air, and any water intrusion. Super excited about that. And as you can also see, we used the liquid flash and we went up and we caught the nails that were below the first strip of tape at four foot level. Because that's, to me, that's where you're most vulnerable, right? Because to me, this lower section is where you're most vulnerable. Like vul <laughs> vulnerable. Because to me, this bottom section right here is where houses are most vulnerable. <laughs> okay, most susceptible, okay. <laughs> because to me, this bottom section right here is where buildings are most susceptible to leak. And as remodeling contractors, that's where we would find most of the rot in the siding and in the sheathing. So we just covered all the nail holes, four foot down, all the way around. Now this is where we started. This was dad's idea, put tape there, make a nice band, but it took a lot of product. This right here took almost a whole tube. So when Jordan and Rad turned the corner, they decided, well, if we're gonna finish this building today with the liquid flash, we need to change our game. So they just got under here and filled in that little diagonal. And I'm touching that right now, feeling it, and it is sealed from the slab to there. They did a great job. And something we're thinking about on the main house is maybe a different detail taking our framing, setting it back from the edge of the slab so that our sheathing, whether it's just the plain zip or the zip R with insulation, flushes out to the foundation. So if the zip flushes out with the slab, you just have a nice, easy transition there. We don't have this little step. One bead of liquid flash, smooth it out with the squeegee, and you're good to go. I really look forward to doing that on the main house. There are a lot of things we're gonna do different on the main house, but also there's a lot of things we're gonna do just the same. And another thing we're ready for on the main house is our window order. Most of the windows are gonna be like the ones on the back of the garage. They're gonna come with that nail fin, but the big ones on the back on the gable end wall, on the great room, I know we're gonna to have to order that nail fin now, so that's good to know. And like we've been saying all along, this garage build is our experiment. It's where we're learning so we can apply everything we learn to the main house, so I can't wait for that. So happy to see the garage all sealed up and it couldn't come at a better time. As you can see from the sky, we are about to get dumped on. We checked the radar and we're gonna have rain for the next three days. So we're gonna get a good test on the windows, the roof and our liquid flash. So that completes the window trilogy that completes the air sealing of the building and that completes the video. And as we've said before, we are not home builders. We were remodelers tackling our first project and we're putting the whole thing on YouTube at your mercy hope we're doing a good job if we are by now you should know how to seal that like button seal it smash it we really appreciate that subscribe and ring that bell if you haven't already don't forget to check out our merch bunkerbranding.com holidays are coming up make a great gift we're also on instagram at stud pack official and we'll see you right back here on our next stud pack video when who knows what we're going to be doing